biological laboratory. On the southwest part of the Archelata Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building, we drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. A uh, number of the early, at that time, number of the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were, were um, uh, at the rate of up two miles a day. It was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down, we wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer, or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up, the gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien graves had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we we drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and well that's when it all all the hell broke loose really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build a underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time. I reached for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the folder, all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. This was in August, late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes. You got a regular clothes on. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment and you're reaching for a gun it's it's not the easiest thing to do and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting and I killed two of them yes they're mortal and they do die however in the process uh, one of them did this I rem all I remember is that he just kinda waved his hand in front of his chest and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every, uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot. Burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents. Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm d talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979, 
our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack, both on the surface as well as underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar. Maybe some of you are familiar with that. Uh, would some of you raise your hands who've heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the, uh, oh, very good, about half the group. Well, Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type. We'll show him everything. Well, these are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I have a picture. I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This old place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Al Bielica has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day, all the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists of, of that particular day. This was, in, this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here or whatever, whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 1937, uh, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's for 58 years, this man's been employed, probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just going to use you for alien bait or something. I don't know. But anyway, he basically hasn't changed. He lives for 490 years, what he says his lifespan is. Now, he's supposedly a semi-benevolent, he's a human-looking type person. He has six fingers and six toes, and he's got one oversized heart one lung, giant lung, uh, his blood vessels are bigger, he's got copper oxide for blood similar to an octopus, uh, his brain capacity 300 centimeters greater than ours, he has a thinking capacity, uh, IQ, if, if you were to measure it, would be totally off the scale, be about a 1200 IQ, um, he speaks a hundred languages fluently, alien as well as others, um, he's a remarkable person, I had a chance to meet him one time. Now, um, by the way, he doesn't shake hands. He's kind of in a spacesuit because all aliens, regardless of benevolent or otherwise, they're carrying germs and diseases and bacterium in and on them that are deadly to us. If, if I were making policy, I, I'd quarantine them all because, because how do we not know that some of our diseases like AIDS, Ebola, uh, hantavirus and a few of these other weird designer diseases, as I call them, are not made from the cadavers of some of these aliens as a biological weapon to use against the people of the United States. Well, I'm tired. I'm a tired American speaking out. What I'm telling you is kind of a, almost like a brain overload here. Back in 1946, we set off an, a number, actually four atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll. It's a group of islands in the South Pacific. I have an original photograph here with original language on the photograph that shows there is a large alien spaceship off a wingtip of the United States aircraft. It was a drone aircraft right at the point where the bomb was beginning to show a neutron flash cloud. Here's the bomb going off. Here's the airplane tip here, and here is the alien spacecraft. Now, in 1947, excuse me, 1947, questions later, please. In 1947, 
after Roswell debacle, our military got before the U.S. Senate. They were hauled before the U.S. Senate and says, what's going on here? Well, we didn't know anything about disks until this happened. It flopped in our backyard. Total lie. They lied to the U.S. Senate. They should have been prosecuted as traitors. Anybody lying to a United States Senator or House of Representative, any Senator or House of Representative person, President of the United States, Vice President, any, any Cabinet member lying to the American public is a traitor and should be dealt with in an appropriate fashion. This is actual proof, positive, that this occurred in 1946. Now, the U.S. military knew all about flying disks and flying disk technology as early, thoroughly early, as 1933. Of course, we remember the Germans did, too, the Nazi Germans, Hitler and all, all their bunch of people. Now, it gets to the big question, if, if all this has been hidden from us, you know, everybody says, well, where's the proof? I've got some of the proof laying on the table. But a lot of you probably are totally skeptical. They say, well, I could be anything. In my hand here, I have a piece of what's called corbamite. It's the heaviest element in the world. Element 140. This piece of material weighs 15 ounces. It's three and a half times the weight of uranium. It cannot be made to emit gamma rays. It cannot be isotoped. It is totally stable. It is used in all stealth aircraft and all Phoenix-class submarines. When combined with other alien elements, it is impregnable. It cannot be melted with charged particle beam weapon. When properly combined in secretive compounds, it can withstand temperatures in excess of 10 million degrees Fahrenheit. It is grown by aliens who have given a good... The other side of the alien question is, some of these aliens have broken off from their mainstream and said, we're not getting a fair shake, and so this is what happens. And I'm talking about the alien graves. Some of them broken away. They're talk about not being popular. But this particular piece of metal is an amazing piece of technology. It's capable of being grown in 15 different crystal systems. Now, I'm a geologist. And I, prior to 15 or 20 years ago, knew of only six crystal systems. And there's actually 15, if you count all the alien metals. Now, this is only element 140. If you look at the local periodic table in your local library, it says 104. Somewhere down the line, we've been lied to and we've been cheated. What we have to do is we have to literally ask for the truth. If we cannot ask for the truth, we must demand the truth. We must take it before courts of law in common law systems, and we must demand it. If we cannot do this, our founding fathers told us the only thing left is to overthrow, to get the parasites out. I don't advocate overthrow, but it does look like this may be the only alternative. Now, I'm going to casually mention to you something that's very scary indeed and tell you what the alien agenda is. And it's going to sound very familiar. The alien agenda is the complete takeover of this planet, the killing off of five, six, to seven eighths of the world's population by the year 2029. The U.S. military has known about this for 45 years. They've told no one. As far as I know, I'm the only person standing before a crowd talking about the alien agenda, secretively. Okay. The, 
back in 1954, I'll give you a quick overview. There was the created 1954 treaty where Eisenhower signed a pact with the known alien species of the time. There were three at the time. And said that we're going to deal in high technology, but you can take a few head of cattle and a few human beings and you can experiment on them. It's unthinkable. It's stuff straight out of the Nazi death camps, and I'm kidding you not, it's plain BS. And it's got to stop. Now, the Great in 1954 treaty would have been violated. 